news incoming for tomorrow. We have NVIDIA earnings. We will go over that. We'll also go over DJT, SMCI as well. Seems like SMCI might be a buy sometime soon. We'll go over the oil, gold, AI sector, Tesla, the bigger names, Apple, Meta, and so forth, and all the other sectors as well. So smash the like button, subscribe if you're new. Your A1 analyst is here. Let's get this video over 200 likes in four hours. That's all I ask. So smash the like button and comment those stocks down below. So I can have good analysts for the next video and we'll have the comment section closer to the end of the video with the crypto sector, crypto section as well. OK, and if I talk fast, you can always slow down the video or even watch the video twice. There are A1 levels and even as the market is open, you can come back and watch the video, too, to see how those levels are acting. Right. It's supposed to help you the best way it can. So make sure you just keep watching videos. Slow it down. If I talk fast, I'm trying to input a lot to not make the video too long because if i talk slow the video will probably be over an hour then also let me know i might do something with the members so become a member on the youtube channel i might post an extra video in there we'll see of how we can get more info out so let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below maybe like post the extra video in the morning or maybe fridays or maybe just for the member we'll see okay but let me know but yeah let's go go over the ai sector first nvidia had a nice big update today but technically it did not do much, okay? Remember I told y'all in this range, there's not really much I would do at NVIDIA, especially the day before earnings, which is tomorrow. So yes, we have resistance at 147.70, and yes, we have support at 135.30, but depending on what it does for earnings, it's going to blow through one of those, hopefully. You want one of those to break to let us know where NVIDIA wants to go. But the whole market is pretty much waiting on NVIDIA, and I think NVIDIA will move the whole market as well. So be mindful of that. So yes, we have the levels, but I will be playing NVIDIA earnings. Then we have long-term shares of NVIDIA, right? We have shares that we bought at 110. And we only sold a quarter of them. So if NVIDIA rockets, we'll just be chilling because we already got the long-term shares. But yeah, we're going to play the earnings. So then we'll just pretty much wait. So that's how I'm looking to play NVIDIA right now. I play the earnings. We already have the long-term shares. And then after the earnings, we'll kind of know what we want to do with NVIDIA. Maybe sell some shares, maybe buy more and so forth. So wait for the earnings to come out tomorrow. That would be pretty big. And make sure you're on the live stream tomorrow because we'll be trying to see what we want to do in NVIDIA for earnings play. Let's head and go to AMD. So AMD is pretty stalled. Still looking for put options on AMD. I remember I had a support. I mean, I had a resistance, a smaller resistance at about 140-ish. The high today was about 139.75. So it missed it from about 25 cents in this range and it had that nice pull down okay so watch that level because if amd wants to break this area that means that amd kind of wants to retrace a little bit higher kind of like it did here so i can't get puts yet but i still want amd to the lower side below 120 so that's where i'm looking to get long-term shares right because i don't own any long-term shares of amd i was really focused on just nvidia for that whole ai type sector I was really only focused on buying NVIDIA. Like I and we played Intel, but I didn't play Dell, AVGO. I want the money, the money real focus so you make more than trying to split it up into different things. So that's why we did amazing on NVIDIA. But AMD, so big buys, big shares buys below 120. That's where I want it. And then if it breaks the resistance at 140, then that means it might want to trace higher. If it kind of stays in between this support and resistance, there's not much to do. But then if it comes back and breaks this resistance of the, I mean, the support at 135.65, then I'm looking for puts for AMD to continue dropping lower, right? So pretty much it dropped the retracement back to resistance and we're looking for that pour back down in this range here. So that's what I'm looking out for on AMD front. AVGO is pretty solid. I'm still looking for it to break that support level so I can get puts on it to go down to the 150s. Still bearish on AVGO. I wouldn't get shares here or calls here unless it started breaking above like 166.75. That is a shorter term resistance level. It, if it kind of breaks that, then AVGO might want to start pushing up to the 170. So I'll go ahead and put that on the chart actually. I'll move this big resistance level down. 166 uh we'll put about yeah 75 so let me write it out actually it'll be a little one six uh 75 so watch that resist level avg if it breaks that then we might have a little higher retracement avg to like the 170s if not it comes back and breaks support i'm looking to go down to 150s and i'm actually looking to get put options for that to happen so that's what i'm looking out for at avgo the for broadcom any other stocks you want me to add in the AI sector, make sure you comment those down below and put like AI sector. So whatever stock you're commenting, put what sector it is uh, to make it a little bit faster. So Dell, 13140 support, resistance 143. But honestly, there's not much I want to do with Dell. The really only thing that I'm kind of intrigued on is if it breaks support, then I want to play it down to 120, 128. That's pretty much it. Um, if it goes up, if it breaks 143, 
Maybe I'll play Dell to like the 150s. We'll see. It just needs to break one of these is what I'm saying to really get some direction. We really haven't moved in like two weeks of Dell. We've kind of just been stalled. They also have earnings next week on Tuesday. So depending on what NVIDIA does, NVIDIA is probably going to move Intel, Dell, AVGO, AMD as well. But Dell will have his own earnings next week. So maybe Dell might not start moving until then. But in this range, there's really nothing I would do with it for now. Let's get and go over to SMCI. So remember what I told y'all SMCI that you want after this drop, right? So you want the drop, you want the support, you want the run. Then you want the retracement, and then I want to catch that secondary run. So we have the drop, aka here, support, aka here, the run up, aka here, and now I'm looking for that pull down for what I want to buy on SMCI. But remember what I told you, SMCI, once it breaks $24, which is a resistance level, I believe it was going to go to 31 right? So that was my green level of target, and we're literally pushing up there. The only thing is SMCI pushed off of because they did all their paperwork, right? They filed their stuff. That's cool. But they did it all in aftermarket, right? So they did all that push in aftermarket. And you see today, it really did not do much. So how I'm looking to play SMCI is if we get a pull down, that's what I want, right? Because this is only the start of a move, right? This is only the start of it. So if it kind of pushes up with no real pull down to 30, the 3150 area, then I just won't play it. But if we get some pull down, then that's actually going to lead to a decent buy, especially if that pull down holds as a support. So I'm going to take resistance off for here. I won't add a new support on it just yet. I don't see one that is clear, so I'm not just going to add levels on just to add it. But right now we have our target, and in the range it is, if I want to buy shares on it, right, I would need some type of pull down because I don't chase price ever no matter what. So I would need some type of pull down to play it, and that's why we scalp every morning with options. That brings in our consistent profit. Then all this extra stuff is just extra plays, right? We never need to play SMCI. That is the goal. You would never need to play stuff like this. You could really just scalp and play your stuff every morning. You could really trade the same three stocks and never trade anything else. But that's a different topic. So SCI target right here, looking for pull down. And yeah, so they submitted the compliance plan to NASDAQ. That's why they're having that push. So we'll see what SMCI wants to do. DJT, remember what I told y'all, okay? DJT has resistance at 3250. It literally stopped there yesterday and poured right back down. I also said DJT was a news type of movement, right? It didn't just move off pure price. It moved off news. So sometimes that just doesn't hold up. And then if you look at the aftermarket and pre-market, yes, it went up all fine and dandy, but you need to understand is it going to continue going up not just this and now you're chasing it and now you're just down because you chase something that probably didn't want to go up in the first place it just went off news so you have to understand why price is doing something if it's moving off news usually that news is temporary type of moves if it's moving off actual price strong price movements then it's more of a long gated type of move so it kind of just start dying down so djt is still the same levels that i'm looking out for uh, support at 28.35. If it breaks that, that means DJT is ready to go back to the downside. And I'll be looking for DJT to go down to the 23, 24 area. Or if we try to come back and break 32.50, then DJT might want to start pushing up around the 36 range. So it needs to break out of one of these two areas to kind of let us know where DJT wants to go. But technically, DJT has not moved for about two weeks since last Thursday on November 7th. I would say about a week and a half, it has not moved, right? It's kind of just been stalled in here. So yes, yesterday might have seemed like a bigger day, but not really. It's still in the same price range that we've kind of been moving for like a week and a half. So I would say the major thing is watch these two major levels on DJT to really know where DJT wants to go. So in here, in between here, I'm not trying to buy DJT. I'd rather wait for a directional move to kind of show itself and then play in that directional move. Kind of like SMCI, we're moving. But we need to balance price out. You don't want to chase price. I think that's just all retail mindset. You're trying to chase something just because you're trying to chase profits. OK, but yeah, that's DJT. Let's go to Apple. Remember, I, I keep saying this. The biggest thing on Apple is support to 1640 or resistance to 3670. Once one of those breaks, I'm looking for a big play on Apple. If it breaks support down, if it breaks resistance up, pretty simple. That's all I'm looking out for Apple. In between here, all this Fugazi stuff, I'm not looking to touch Apple anywhere in there. Apple has not moved in months, and there's other stuff that are moving that are just better to play, right? Meta's moving highs. NVIDIA's moving. There's other stocks that are moving that we can focus on until Apple is ready, and I'll just be patient on that and see when it is ready. 
Meta stock went down to 550. Like I told y'all, that was pretty much where I called Meta to go to. Now I'm trying to wait for the next kind of move to formal Meta. There are some shorter term levels, not really too strong, but I would say a resistance area on Meta stock is right around 563.25, meaning if it kind of breaks that, then it might want to retrace a little bit higher. Hold on, 520. Oh, what? 560. 563.25. 563. Jeez, what is going on? 563.25. There you go. Make sure you guys smash that like button, subscribe if you're new. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm looking out for resistance, support, but overall, not too much I would do a meta stock in the range that it's in. If you go to Amazon, Amazon is not too much I would do in this area. Then also Google, there's not much I would do in that area as well with these names. Okay. I rather wait till NVIDIA earnings comes out. These might even move off NVIDIA a little bit also. Okay. Because the AI type of sectors that they kind of do and their, um, their partnership that they're kind of doing as well. So we'll see on these two, but for, for now, these two, I really don't see much on those two for now. Let's go to Palantir. So Palantir bounced off the support around 6010. It just hasn't really wanted to have a bigger drop. Now, something key on Palantir is it does have this resistance area right around 6350. So 6350, if it breaks that, Palantir is probably going back to all-time highs, which is above here at 66. So watch that. I would still like a deeper pull down, but maybe once it breaks 6350, I might play call options to back to all-time highs. We'll see. But it just really hasn't had a bigger pull down of what I want to buy shares. So shares, I'm not buying yet. I'll just be patient on it. But maybe options, if it breaks that area with strength, then it's probably going to around 66, and I'll play call options to that. That's probably the only way I'm looking to play Palantir in this range that it's in. It would still need a bigger drop for me to get shares on it. SoFi is booming up off of this range that it had. We did get SoFi shares. Like I said, if you join the team, you'll see that. We also did a couple plays today. We did do SPY put option plays for average of 10% gains. And we sold 25% of our RKB shares that we bought at 71. We sold it at $30, $92 for a 30% gain. And I still have 75% left of that, right? So it, it pretty much like follows the Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin's at 100,000, these shares would be at 100. So we kind of play in a lot of crypto stocks and crypto areas with that. So we did take some profit off RKB. But consistent profit, we scalp every morning and we did a spy put. I literally called out the spy put perfect. What I wanted, reversal, entry, exit, everything. Make sure you guys join the team. By the time you look at the website, it's probably a couple of dollars higher than this already. But just make sure you join before the next price increase. First thing in the description. If any of these fit you, then you should. If you're frustrated, you're not winning, you don't know what to do, the market is confusing you, you're chasing this, that, this, that, and you're not winning, apparently you're doing something wrong and you need to fix it, okay? It all starts with you. So that's what I'm looking at for SoFi. They do have support at 1350. So as long as they don't break the support, I'm holding my shares of SoFi for SoFi to start running up more to around $19. That is like my bigger target on the SoFi stock front. They also had a smaller resistance at 1427. If you look at the five minute chart, you see this run. No stoppage there. It actually turned resistance to a support. I mean, it turned resistance, yeah, to a support, kind of bounce off that. So we can take off that 1425. Our next area of resistance is 1460. But overall, so far, it looks pretty decent. Got the shares, and we're already up on it, looking for it to go a little bit higher. So, so far, it's pretty simple in that range. Clove stocks trying to make his way back up. I don't see too much on it right now. We can change this support level, though. We'll put a new support at about 310. So that's your new support level on Clove if you are looking to play it. I'm not looking to buy Clove at all, but I think analysts will help you. So 310 support, there's really not much to do on Clove that I see as a decent buy, but 310 support, and I don't see a clear resistance just yet. Probably let it move a little bit because like I told y'all, it could still drop all the way down here and still be in bullish territory. You just don't want it to break below 280. So as long as it doesn't break 280, it still has a smaller chance to try to go up. Then um, Funware is trying to bounce off, but honestly, there's nothing to do on Funware, so I won't even waste the time talking about it. They still have the same support, though, at 370. If it, It's already in bearish territory, but if it breaks that, might even stop talking about it. It just looks very nasty, very slow, and probably just not worth the time to really spend on it. Let's head and go over to Tesla. So make sure you guys smash the like button, 200 likes, spend four hours, comment those stocks down below. Yeah, I know I read every comment. And if I'm talking too fast, I'm trying to put a lot in the same video, just slow down the video, okay? Or watch it twice. Now, Tesla, monster, number one shares holding. Okay. We do have a support. So 311 hit perfect. We got pushed off that. Then it ran up to the resistance. We had a little drawdown and today had a little nice up day. It even tested that resistance again at 347.80. If you look at the five minute chart of what happened today on Tesla, look at that. Almost a perfect hit of resistance again. And literally, Tesla just stopped 
right below that resistance area after this decent push that it had. So Tesla, we have the long term shares. We're up like 80, 90 percent. So we're chilling on that front. Options. OK, this is where it gets interesting. So what we're going to do is so Tesla did everything. Hell support pushed off all that good stuff. So 311 hit perfect. A1 levels always is why you never miss a video. Let's take all this off. OK, you're let's take this off, too. So your support level bigger one is around 32020 this level if it breaks that the upside is probably done for so that's a big level you want to watch second is we have this resistance area at 347.80 that it has not broken yet it has tested that two days in a row if you look at the five minute chart you see yesterday tested it pre-market and normal hours pushed down tested it today it didn't want to break so i believe once that breaks then tesla will try to push up to 360 and higher which is I'll probably get call options once that breaks to push up to the 360s. And then we have the new resistance at 373. But I do have a newer target. Oh, I didn't put it on here. Of Tesla. I think it's like 380 or something like that. No, yeah, like 390-ish, I think, is my new target on Tesla. Yeah, about like 385 or so. So that's my new target on Tesla on the upper side, as long as we don't break the support down here. So what I would do is... 385, I think that's what I said, is my target. So that's what I'm looking out for a Tesla aim for. So looking for potential call options and so forth on that range as it continues this up movement. But Tesla's a monster. Those are levels I'm kind of looking out for. Am I looking for more long-term shares? No, it's already the number one holding. So I'm pretty much just holding that. But I am looking for new like swing shares. Like swing shares are very specific because say like I buy shares here, I'll be looking to sell them at like 420. Very specific entry and specific exit, right? We are very structured traders we don't just be trading everything 20 times a day or 20 million times we're not we're not on the market eight hours a day i we're literally live on the private live stream for about an hour a day sometimes two hours and we're done i really don't even check the market no more right very consistent very consistent but uh watch those this level support tesla waiting for that resist level to break might get calls above that but overall pretty much chilling on tesla front if i do say so myself let's check out the energy sector in phase still pretty stalled so i'm still waiting for in phase to kind of get out this range it's just been stalled we still have support at 59.85 just hasn't really done much so we're still waiting for in phase to kind of push out this range also if you look at like fslr solar they're not moving they're not doing nothing then sunrun they're still dropping so energy sector doesn't seem like it's ready yet we even throw the cannabis sector in here they just bled that's why I say you have to have you have to have price break out of specific areas and levels for price to show you that it really wants to start running and not get excited just off a one day push because that can give up very quickly. So cannabis sector is in the gutter right now, as it seems like some stocks that I want to buy heavy that I do not own. I know y'all remember Nike, Disney, PayPal, those are ones we own, but stocks I do not own yet. We're about to go over right here. I'm going to put it in the middle of the video. First one is UPS. I want big shares of this and I want big call options, which are leaps. OK, my shares, I want to hold shares to minimum to 200. Right now it's about 133. So and I think it still might go down a little bit. So that's a minimum about 50 percent gain on shares. And then the big leap call options will do probably do well over 150 percent. So I'm looking around 200 percent average on the UPS just by itself. UPS is one. The next one is Ulta. I don't own Ulta. Remember what I told you all? I want Ulta below 300. Did I want to buy in this range? No. Why not? Because I still believe Ulta wanted to go down. Look at what it's doing. It is slowly dripping back down, trying to get below 300. That is what I want. That is when I'll probably start buying it. I want to see once it goes to the 300, I want to see how it acts in the 300. Does it keep pushing? Does it find support and so forth? But below 300 is where I get interest in playing it. They also have earnings in December too. So watch out for that. But yeah, Ulta is one. Also the makeup industry like Elf and also EL, those as well. OK, but they're not ready yet. Ulta is getting down to a price target. Elf and EL are kind of just a little stalled. If you look at it, EL hasn't really moved in like two weeks. And then if you look at Elf, it did push up, but it was pushed up from earnings. It wasn't a natural push up just off price itself. So it's just kind of stalled in this range. Now, the thing about Elf is, which I want to put a level on here, if it comes back and breaks around 130, I might buy Elf for it to start turning up and I might get call options on Elf. So Elf might be ready first if it breaks that 130. Kind of watch out for that. But Ulta is one I want to buy. Big call options on that I do not own yet. It was UPS as well. And then I'll give y'all two and I'll put two more close to the end of the video. So those are two I want to get. Very good long terms and so forth like that. Let's go to the bonds. Remember what I told you about the bonds. Very specific, okay? 
bonds are different than just like a regular type stock. They're going to move off interest rates dropping. They're going to move off um, fear in the market. And right when we got a little fear, y'all saw the S&P 500 drop in pre-market. What did bonds do? They actually boomed in pre-market, right? So the fear is going to help the bonds. Money's going to flock to the bonds, which is going to help the bonds go up more. And also interest rates drop is going to help the bonds go up even more. So yes, I am still looking to buy these. We did just do some buys on uh, TMF. I think we did some buys on TLT, but I'll probably, I'm going to buy more TLT sometime in November. So before November is over, I'm going to buy some more TM, TLT and TMF. And I also want big calls on TLT as well. So my target on TLT is 140 minimum. And then the support is 9020. And then my target on TMF is 200 minimum. And then the support on TMF is not that clear. So I won't put one, but these are bigger long term shares. I want to make sure I buy it when it matters. So whenever we start getting some rockets, hasn't gone up in a while though, but whenever we start getting something like this, these type of movements, I was buying over here when it mattered. And then I just enjoy the profits as it goes up. So that's what I'm looking at for these. And we literally do this all the time. We did it with Disney. We currently doing it with Disney. Let me just show you real quick. So Disney, we bought in here. We enjoyed the profits up. Then we sold. And then Disney's up again. I never sold my long-term shares. I only sold the leap call option. We did 220%, which is what I'm saying. I want to do those leaps for um, PayPal, for Nike, for Ulta, for UPS, for the stock we literally just talked about that I just forgot. But yeah. So I'm about to do a lot of leaps. I'm just being patient and waiting for them. But the time might be coming sometime soon. I would say within like three months, I'll probably be buying those. But just to give you all an instance, Disney, it, it just doesn't stay down too long. OK, but yeah, that's that sector. Let's go ahead and go over. Oh, so we just went over the bonds. So, yeah, PayPal, like I said, I want to buy more PayPal and so forth, but no real levels to add on PayPal. I'm just kind of being patient and waiting for the big elite calls that I want to do on this one as well. Also, Celsius. I don't own Celsius, but Celsius did is bouncing off my support area that I had right around 2510. If you look at this five minute chart real quick, that's a 10 minute chart. Look at this five minute chart. Make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, join the team. See that five minute chart? You see how it kind of fell? balancing out around that support area and then it's having that push up it has some decent push up today now celsius will get interesting but it would need to make some more rooms on that higher side i would say minimum celsius would need to break above 31 ish 32 so it has still some room to go but i do plan on catching once it wants to reverse the bullishness catching that potential run for shares and maybe options on that higher side so we'll kind of see if this is the start but this is just one day push off of a very massive drop. So we just got to be patient on it. But Celsius is one that I am looking at for some potentials. Let's go ahead and go over to AMC, pretty much in the gutter. Really nothing to go over AMC, but I know some people are watching it. There's really no levels I want to put or nothing really that's sticking out. GameStop, nice push off support. Remember, support is 2560. Look at that. Almost hit it perfect. The low today was 2570. 10 cents away from that support level I gave y'all of GameStop. OK, remember, I told you if it breaks that support it's going down to like 24, if it breaks resistance at 2815 it's going to 30. So we just got to watch. It's the same lows we've been watching. Look at test resistance here. It dropped test support here is trying to push up. So you still need one of those areas to kind of break out of GameStop to really let you know where it wants to go. But yeah, so resistance 2815 when I'm watching, if it breaks that more upside and then support 2580, if it breaks that more downside. So very simple to kind of understand of kind of what I'm looking out for on the GameStop front. Gold, gold, trying to make some higher retracements up. What I want to be watching on gold is this resistance area right around about 1818, or you can run it up to about 1820. See how gold acts in this resistance area right here? We are starting to push up a little bit. I'm not bullish on it just yet. Still bearish on gold, by the way, but it needs to balance out price, right? This is a very vertical down movement with no real retracement until now. So that is still okay, still bearish on it. I just want to see what happens on gold in this range. Now, if gold starts breaking this range, it might turn back bullish, which means I might start to get shares of GLD or call options on one of these because it might want to start booming up to higher prices. But I would say watch this 18 area for gold. I know we've been calling the directions on gold perfect, right? We were bullish here. Then once it broke in here, we turned bearish, it dropped, and then we might be turning back bullish. So just make sure you pay attention to those. Fairly easy. And like I said, for like GLD, for shares for it to go back to all time highs and maybe even call options because once this thing starts going up it really like scatters up right so if you look at this it really jumps 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 
it it like goes up pretty fast. So watch out for that. Let's check OXY. I've been checked OXY all day actually. Ah, pretty stalled. Still looking for OXY to go down to break 48. It got close to it here, but I wanted to like actually fall through and actually have price go break through it. So still watching support at 49.70. If you look at OXY, ever since like October 28, it just it hasn't done nothing. Still bearish on oil, by the way, but yeah, I think a bigger play on oil might be coming in soon. It's been dropping for a minute. It's been dropping for a minute. It's really been bearish ever since like 2022 of August. We've been just kind of looking for downward side. I really haven't turned bullish on oil until here. I think we we're bullish right here, but then we turn back bearish. But yeah, still looking for oil to continue going down to lower prices and same levels on oil, if I do say so myself. Not really much going on with it. Nuclear side, LTBR actually broke support, so I really only see downside for it. If it doesn't come back and test 640, I would just assume more downside. So the nuclear side is kind of in the woodwinds. Also, if you look at like Lockheed Motor, if we start getting more of this war stuff, this will do good for this stock. So I'm looking at potentials, potential options, potential of what, how we can kind of play it. See how that little pop it had after it had any sense of type of war, but it kind of like balanced out. Okay. But any type of war, Lockheed Motor would do a little good. So I'm kind of watching that even when they had like these hard drops here. It just makes it a little more interesting to try to play it. So this is something I'm watching on like the war type front to do pretty good. We'll see. It depends on if it's, uh, escalations get a little bit higher or not. Also, TSM is pretty much in no man's land. There's nothing I would do on TSM if I'm being honest. I just kind of want to throw that in there. Then a firm is still booming. I told y'all the firm can go up more interest rates drops and so forth. It's kind of going without me, which is OK. It held support good at 5330 beautiful there and it kind of boomed up so right now i'm just kind of waiting for the next play but i do have a bigger target on a firm that i gave the team is well higher than 63 so there's plenty of time to play it i'm in no rush and i'll just kind of wait also if you look at like linden tree linden tree hasn't even started going up yet so we're kind of being patient on linden tree a firm is just more more bound to kind of push before linden tree so a firm was the one i was looking for first but like i said it still has a way big way to go three digit number type way so still a lot of room for that one but yeah look at the lending tree also like dollar tree they haven't started but dollar tree and dollar general so dollar tree still haven't started they have earnings in december and then also like dollar general they haven't started they have earnings in december as well but i want them to recover some of this huge drop that they had so we'll kind of see they're also very bleed if you zoom out to since the inception of them since like 2020 this is the biggest drop they've seen ever that they've been on the market and if you look at dollar tree this is the biggest drop they've seen ever in the market since their inception dollar tree was actually back in like 1995 so very intriguing and i plan on catching the runs to the higher side not all-time highs but specific price points of dollar tree and dollar general so i haven't forgot about those i'm just kind of patiently waiting and honestly kind of waiting until their next earnings so every earnings they've been crashing like crazy so i i will play the earnings for these for both of them actually Dollar Tree is December 4th. I mean, Dollar General. No, Dollar Tree, December 4th. Dollar General is December 5th. So whatever happens on Dollar, Gen oh, Dollar Tree will probably happen on Dollar General. Okay. They're they're just not doing good right now. So watch out for those. But those will be very interesting that week because I'll know if I want to buy or not. I'm playing the earnings for sure. So we should bang on earnings. But yeah, we'll kind of see on that front. Let's go ahead and go over to the Bitcoin, man. The Bitcoin. Remember, fairly simple on Bitcoin. Resistance is 92,000. Support is 89,000. If we break support, Bitcoin is going in 80,000. OK, I plan on buying more Bitcoin in this area right here. Right. That's if we break support. We have not broken support. We tested it here and we bounced off. But guess what? We have not broken resistance at 92,000. Let me go to the five minute chart. It is only testing the resistance level. It has not broken. It tested it here, came down, 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 right? So it's still coming down every time it tries to test it. It has not broken that area yet. Once it breaks and leaves this price area, leaves it, not all this come back down, touch it, come back down, touch it. You want it to leave this, then Bitcoin's going to 100,000. That is also when I'll get calls on Coinbase. So those are like the major two levels I'm watching for on Bitcoin to keep it purely frank and simple. I haven't bought any more Bitcoin up here. The last time we bought was over here at 68,000. 
we did take like 25 percent profit off because my target was 9,000. like i told y'all for a while i was waiting for this to break once it broke i believe bitcoin was going 9,000. it did that fairly easy play this is why i say make sure you guys join the team first in that description if, if any of this fits you then make sure you join also you have personal training right here as well make sure you read that see if it fits you as well you can enroll in personal training and then you have the elite elite yearly and lifetime memberships lifetime actually comes with personal training so Best bang for your buck, probably a lifetime. You just pay once forever, but see which one fits you the best. You get access to the Discord, the private live streams. I think the best bang for this is you get me live to see what I'm looking at for, how I'm looking to play, entries, exits, what's best, what stock's not moving good, and so forth, to really build yourself up. But yeah, that's what I'm looking at for Bitcoin. Um, nothing crazy. Ethereum, still same support, 3,050. It really hasn't moved. I am looking to buy more Ethereum. I'm just kind of seeing it's, it's not moving. We need movement. We need movement. I don't want to buy and no movement because then you'll buy and it just doesn't move a week later. You might as well just wait. So Ethereum the same levels for now. Solana. Man, Solana's booming. I haven't bought. We, we sold a quarter of our Solana shares to actually buy Polygon. So, yeah, I haven't. Solana's just booming right now, honestly. I'm going to take resistance level off for now. I'm going to leave the support on here at 217.35. And we'll kind of see what Solana. I do want to buy Solana again. I think Solana can get well over 300, but... I just want to see when that buy is. So I'm kind of being patient on it. Dogecoin. Dogecoin. Oh, remember that resist level I gave y'all at 4150? What hit perfect today on Dogecoin? Levels work on cryptos too. Look at that. Beautiful resistance hit. This is why you never miss a video. Look at this run. Look where the run stopped. At that resistance level I gave y'all. I said if it breaks that, then it's going up to about the 45-ish higher ranges. It never broke it. It literally tested and came right back down. This is why you get the video over 200 likes in four hours comment those stocks down below and let me know how we should do those extra videos maybe y'all join in the memberships it's only 4.99 right so say you get an extra video or two videos a week just to the members it's like you're only paying 50 cents or a dollar per week for an extra video with a1 analyst so or i don't know we'll see how we do it but there's a lot of levels and stocks i don't talk about because the videos are long and i don't want to make them too long where it's like ah you know but yeah that's dogecoin what else? What was the other crypto I want to talk about? It was something else. I think I forgot. I'll leave the crypto side a little light because the video is already 32 minutes. But yeah, that's what I'm looking out for. Coinbase. Once it breaks 329.90, I plan on getting calls on Coinbase to start booming up to the 360s. That's something I do on Coinbase. We also have long-term shares on Coinbase. I haven't bought any more in this range. I really want to see what Bitcoin does. But yeah, Coinbase got room to go. It's a monster. It's very vertical. Once it starts moving again, Boop, 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 boop. it's going to be vertical okay so kind of watch out for that on coinbase i would say new support i would probably put new support around 285.30 285.30 that'll be your new support on coinbase that's what i'll be watching for uh mstr is booming okay they're doing very good the difference between mstr and coinbase mstr is more of you buying bitcoin coinbase is more of me buying a platform that will benefit off of Bitcoin. So they both benefit off Bitcoin. It's just different ways. Like MicroStrategy, all their money's in Bitcoin. So it's basically like you're buying Bitcoin. But Coinbase, they have the platform. They get transaction fees and so forth where people buy Bitcoin on. So just like different ways, right? I already have a lot of Bitcoin. We have the crypto market. So I was more focused on a platform that would benefit off people buying Bitcoin, which was Coinbase. That's why Coinbase was my main focus. But MSTR, once they have a pull down, which they will, then I'll probably play MSTR. I was more focused on buying the actual Bitcoin than the stock. But once they have a bigger pull down, then it'll be a little more decent. I would say support now is around 335. So watch that on MSTR, but they are fairly high. Um, hood stock. Also, I wanted to go down in this range. I still kind of do, honestly. There's not much I would do on hood stock, if I'm being honest. Let me see. Yeah, not much. Um, hood stock might go to 40s. I would probably say wait for a pull down. You probably have support at about 3250. I would say watch that. And you probably need a little pull down off this run. And this area might be an area to kind of get hood shares in because it's a tighter range. So, like, say I got hood shares in this tighter range. Say I got hood shares around 3350. If it broke this 32, I would only lose 3%. Or the upside is literally like five, 10, almost 10 times that. So, it's not a bad area, but we need a down day, and we I would at least lead it to go below $34. So that's what I would look out for on that hood front. I know there's probably – oh, let's look at the miners real quick. 
If HUD breaks 27, it gets very interesting. HUD is probably the only one that is kind of close of me trying to play. Mara and Riot, they do have some decent targets for reversals, but I feel like HUD's target is bigger to produce a bigger game. So I am looking at the miners. I'm kind of just being patient on it. Also like BITO, this one is pretty up. I'm surprised it's not up more with Bitcoin at all-time highs. So that's a little intriguing, but I feel like this should have been up more. That's the only thing I don't like about this one. And it really hasn't moved since Bitcoin has been pushing. So it's like, I don't know. It might not move that well. And also like BI, BITF not moving as well as either. So you want to really find the leaders in those type of sectors. Some of these just aren't really moving that much. And let's go over y'all comment section. I know there's probably some stocks I'm missing, but let me know what I should do. If y'all want to do that member thing, $4.99, you're only paying a dollar a week for extra video for A1 analysts or 50 cents for if I post two videos. And it's kind of easier because it's all on YouTube, right? I could just post it on YouTube and it'll just, just be for members. Just trying to figure out some ways to kind of get more levels. But uh, PayPal, we went over PayPal. XRP is too high. I would at least need XRP to go down. Oh, that's not XRP. Hold up. That's the market cap of SRP. I would at least need XRP to go down to like below a dollar. So yeah, remember this level right here? If I zoom it out, I need it to go below a dollar. That's when XRP gets a little more interesting to me. Oh, also the SP 500. Uh, remember I gave y'all a support at 584.85. Y'all tell me what his support today on the SP 500. If I go down to the five minute chart, this is why you never miss a video. Smash that like button, subscribe if you're new. Look at that beautiful support. Look at this. Look at this beautiful support head uh, open. Look at that beautiful support and we actually play puts remember i showed you all those puts that we did on spy we played puts right here we played puts right there right i didn't have interest on the upside there was no targets i wanted this downside it literally hit our target well our target didn't hit but our percentage profit hit i was done and i really didn't trade for the rest of the day okay but yeah spy i would say watch that five five eighty four eighty five that's still the same support level it literally hit perfect on well, I was about to say on Friday, on today. So still same support level, hit it perfect, bounce off of it. Not really much to do on SPY. That's the only really level I see. You really don't have any news till Thursday either. All the big news comes out Thursday, right? Unemployment claims, but you have NVIDIA tomorrow. So NVIDIA is like a big day type of news. So kind of watch that. But okay, so let's go over QQQ levels. QQ support about 500. That's really all I see on QQQ, if I'm being honest. SMCI, I know SMCI popped. Fuel cell, fuel cells in the gutter. It's not something I would look to trade. We talked about Clove, SMCR. See, this is what this is like a member video. You get like extra a week. We'll go over like this, just like an extra video to help. SMCR, it's pushing, kind of a slow type of pusher. Eh, kind of too high. All right. Uh, what else? What are the stocks y'all talking about? Oh, BKKT. How did that move? Oh, yeah. Stop that resistance area. Beautiful. $34. It didn't want to break that. Came right back down. So you will you probably need some more downside. But if it breaks 34, then that might give you a push to like above 40. So I would say kind of watch that on BKKT. QQQ, we did that. NVIDIA, DJT, Coinbase, Coinbase, SMCI. Yep, 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 yep. We did all those. We did all those. Snapchat. Man, Snapchat just, so the upside came good with the earnings, right? But it just gave it all up. So that's why Snapchat is really, it didn't get that huge push like I wanted. So it might just be a little slower. So Snapchat, you really got to wait on it for now, if I'm being honest. And then Pacific or Specific. Who knows, man? Who knows? We went over SoFi. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Then we're good, brother. Make sure you guys join the team. First in that description. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at will.knowledge. Make sure y'all watch the story as too. You can see the whole team winning this morning of the play that we did. Um, analyst company coming in soon. Stock Master Academy is about to open soon as well. To really get that lessons in and really turn to a monster. Then always remember, nothing's going to be anything. Just for educational purposes only. So do not trade anything you see here in the video. Catch you guys in the next one.